Today, we'll dive into the wild world of ancient Rome with the 1979 film Caligula. Spoilers ahead. Do you know what the famous critics Siskel and Ebert had to say about this movie? Stick around to find out at the end. Our story begins with young Caligula summoned to the island of Capri by his great uncle, Emperor Tiberius. Capri isn't exactly a cozy getaway, it's a den of corruption and chaos. Caligula witnesses all sorts of bizarre and wild acts orchestrated by Tiberius, who's as mad as a hatter. The island is filled with indulgence and extravagance, a haven for Tiberius's eccentric desires. Tiberius, old and paranoid, rules with an iron fist, but fears for his life. He believes everyone is plotting against him, including Caligula. The young prince is initially cautious, observing the madness around him. He watches as Tiberius indulges in extravagant feasts and peculiar rituals. The tension escalates when Tiberius mysteriously self-deletes, with a little help from Caligula's ally, Macro. And Caligula watches with a mix of horror and fascination. With Tiberius gone, Caligula steps into the role of emperor, and the real fun begins. As he ascends to power, Caligula shows his true colors. He's not just any ruler. He's a ruler with a flair for the dramatic and the absurd. Caligula's bizarre sense of humor and eccentricity are on full display. Now Caligula is in charge and Rome will never be the same. His reign is a mix of eccentricity, cruelty, and sheer madness. He organizes grand and grotesque public spectacles, each more extravagant than the last. From bizarre theater productions to gladiatorial games, Caligula spares no expense in entertaining his subjects. Caligula's love life is equally chaotic. He marries Sisonia, a woman who matches his wild energy. Their union is filled with bizarre public displays and lavish parties. In one scene, Caligula parades Sisonia through the streets of Rome, declaring her the most beautiful woman in the world. The people watch in awe and horror as the couple flaunts their excess. Public spectacles become Caligula's trademark. He hosts lavish banquets where he indulges in every possible luxury. At one banquet, he surprises his guests by having them served gold-plated food. The guests, bewildered but afraid to displease the emperor, eat the inedible dishes. Caligula's behavior becomes increasingly unpredictable. This extravagant project serves no purpose other than to demonstrate his power and wealth. The people are forced to watch as Caligula parades back and forth, reveling in their misery. Despite the grandeur, Caligula's rule is marked by fear and paranoia. He begins to see enemies everywhere and orders the deletion of anyone he suspects of treason. In one chilling scene, he forces senators to participate in degrading games, humiliating them before eventually ordering their deletion. Caligula's madness reaches new heights when he declares himself a god. The once loyal Macro falls out of favor and is brutally deleted on Caligula's orders. As Caligula's madness grows, so does the discontent among his allies and the Senate. Paranoia sets in and he starts seeing enemies everywhere. His cruel and erratic behavior becomes too much for those around him to bear. The people of Rome, once entertained by his antics, now live in fear of his unpredictable wrath. A group of conspirators, led by Sharia, decides it's time to put an end to Caligula's reign. They plot to delete him in the most dramatic fashion. The conspirators are fed up with Caligula's tyranny and devise a plan to eliminate him during a public event. In a climactic scene, Caligula is cornered by the conspirators during a festival. Cherea and his fellow plotters move in surrounding the emperor. Caligula, sensing danger, the conspirators strike. In a flurry of action, they attack Caligula, stabbing him repeatedly. The film ends on a somber note with Rome left to pick up the pieces after Caligula's chaotic rule. The people, freed from the tyranny of their mad emperor, are left to contemplate the cost of his reign. The Senate, once a puppet of Caligula's whims, begins the process of restoring order, a stark reminder of the destructive power of unchecked madness. 
And that's the story of Caligula, a wild ride through the rise and fall of one of Rome's most infamous emperors. What made this movie so special? Well, it's infamous for its controversial scenes, explicit content, and the ambitious attempt to portray the extreme decadence and corruption of ancient Rome, with a cast that includes Malcolm McDowell, Helen Mirren, Peter O'Toole, and John Gilgood. It aimed to be an epic historical drama, but became known for its shocking and outrageous scenes. Now, remember when we asked what made this movie special and what the famous critics Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert had to say about it? Caligula is sickening, utterly worthless, shameful trash. If it is not the worst film I have ever seen, that makes it all the more shameful. People with talent allowed themselves to participate in this travesty. Disgusted and unspeakably depressed, I walked out of the film after two hours of its 170-minute length, Ouch, even a star-studded cast can't get past the sharp jabs of Roger. Thanks for watching. I can only make these with your support. If you enjoyed this recap, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification for nostalgic movies from the yesteryears.